seven. Dan D'Antoni in his eighth year at Marshall, 135 wins, and FAU will start it out here with the basketball inside one of the great college basketball venues, the Cam Henderson Center. Marshall starting out in that wide zone. Now FAU's noticed they're in a zone, and that right there is going to be the weak spot, right there in the center of that zone. Well, it didn't take long. Elijah Martin scores it for the Owls. Now FAU, they're in a man-to-man. -man. They like ball pressure. Uh, they don't like to switch a lot of picks. Both teams without... Some players here tonight, Florida Atlantic, three players missing. Marshall, a couple of key guys missing as well. Right. And a whistle and a foul. And Mark, as you can see, already twice on the first possession, they went to Abina in the mid post area. Coach D'Antoni feels they need to score out of that mid post. And when they kick it out, it'll be step in three. So they should be able to get a little bit easier three point shots than they've been getting. Tumba Baruti committed the foul. It's his first and team foul number one against the Owls. Our officials tonight, Andrew Walton, Joey Richardson, and Alan Sutton. Taylor will trigger it in and gets it into Tavion Kinsey. Kinsey in some trouble and gets it back to Michael Byers. And there is McKee getting the start here tonight and just could not get it to drop. Marshall again, back to that extended 2-3 zone. The wings will be very wide. And the guards will try to come back and block the shot. The Florida Atlantic will be able to get it into the middle of that zone. Long range for Forrest. That one would not fall through. And here comes Marshall on the offensive end. And McKee going to go right to work. But he is denied. Both teams starting out here like they've had a 30-day layoff. Marshall had nine days to get ready for this one. They lost in Ruston to La Tech, and they were scheduled to go up against Southern Miss last Saturday, and that did not happen. Meanwhile, FAU had the first two games of Conference USA against Charlotte and Old Dominion wiped out. And on both ends of the court, the referees are letting both teams know early. If you put two hands on that dribbler, that's going to be an automatic foul. So both teams will adjust to that. Kinsey picking up the foul, his first, and it's team foul number one on the Thundering Herd. And Marshall looks like they're uh, they stayed in that zone and got a steal on the defensive Alabama's play. Here's Taylor ahead of the pack. Andy Taylor. Yeah, Andy Taylor getting out with the finish. Great outlet pass by Chase McKee. Taylor has started all 14 games, averages 34 minutes a game and 12.9 in the scoring column. Vlad Golden moving in. Golden, a transfer from Texas Tech. Uh, again, that, that's going to be the weak part of the zone. They're going to be able to get that ball in the middle, but Marshall's trying to get hands on three-point shooters. And when you look at that zone, that's a long zone, Mark. When you have Kinsey at the top, at a guard spot, when FAU gets that ball to the foul line, he'll try to come from behind and get blocks, a lot like Syracuse when they used to use, you know, Syracuse would never recruit a 5'8 guard because they played that extended zone. And Byers there, I thought he did a great job, really close to getting an offensive foul. Golden knocks down both free throws coming in Hitting just 47.6% from the stripe. Started all 13 games this season. Rubina and Achille Killen. Young man out of Chapmanville Regional High School and McKee and Golden with the tie up there. And Marshall will get the ball OB under. Look for Tavion Kinsey on a mid range. Marshall likes a lot of plays to try to get Kinsey the ball on OB unders. Byers will be the trigger. Taylor hits the deck, get it out to McKee. McKee's an all position player, according to Dan D'Antoni. And a chilly killing is open.
Marshall coming into this game and just going to find the magic of those three pointers. Nice little finger roll there by Greenlee, but he couldn't get it to drop. Here is Marshall on the run and Taylor with his second bucket of the game. Great pass by Kenzie. Andy Taylor running the floor with the finish. Marshall coming in averaging 76.8 points per game, allowing 75 and a half. Florida Atlantic 74.7 and giving up 67.2. Marshall looking for a lead here. Taylor will drill the three, could not get it to go. And that's the spot Coach D'Antoni wants him to push the ball and take a layup or an easy shot, but if not, he wants them to run offense and kind of slow the pace down a little bit more than Marshall has in the past. Look at this wide zone. That's a big, long zone, Mark. Certainly is. Greenlee. And a nice shot there on the baseline by Golden, who has four. That's a right-hand jump hook on the left side of the basket. <laughs> Not an easy shot at all. Seven-footer. Marshall's running a flex pick. Kenzie uh, ignored at that time. Golden Hills from Ooh. Russia, and here is McKee. McKee. Getting a chance to start, Bob. Oh, and quick <laughs> off the dribble. Used his quickness, nice little pump fake, attack the basket for a dunk. McKee starting for the first time in his career. He's played in eight games this season. Averaged about 11 minutes to contest, and number 11, Strokes it from the corner, and that is Forrest. And they have to find Michael Forrest against the zone. Uh, great shooter, solid all-around player. Mike Byers from way out. Now Byers has that constitution there on the timeout, but it wasn't. John L. Davis, number 10, also into the lineup for the Owls. Here is Tavion Kinsey. And could not get that shot to drop, but it goes out of bounds, and it will be Marshall's basketball. Well, Coach D'Antoni, we talked before every game. He tells me they knock threes down all day long in practice. They started the game out 0 for 4. Right there is their out-of-bounds play. They love to get Kenzie a mid-range jumper off of those plays. Missed the shot, but yeah. Anna Chili Killen able to keep it alive. So Marshall gets another stab at it here offensively. Kinsey knocks it down. Yeah, kid, Kinsey really explodes on that mid-range, Jay. Great height on the jumper and knocks it down. Davion Kinsey coming into the game, 19.2 points per contest. He has scored 10 or more points in 48 straight games. Well, the Owls work it offensively. Saldo's shot wouldn't go, and here is Davis keeping it alive for the guys from Boca Raton, and just in the nick of time from the corner, they get it to their money man, Forrest, and he hits it. Yeah, Michael Forrest, you, they, Marshall has to know where he is at all times, and look at him, Forrest on the other end as Marshall misses the layup, is guarding the six foot ten buyers. Down low to Rosaldo. Nice maneuvering and gets it to go. Rosaldo averages 6.4 a game. Yeah, Rosado, nice little reverse layup, used the rim. And a chilly killing. Just could not get it to go through. Here come the Owls on the attack again. A nice drive to the bucket and, and to three consecutive winning seasons. He's really done a nice job there in Boca Raton. He spent time with Mike White at La Tech and also at Florida. And went to college at Indiana. So he learned a few things about basketball, didn't he, Bob? Yes, he did. Wouldn't Boca Raton be a terrible place to live, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> I was there for a football game this year. It's not too shabby when you are in that press box there and you look out and you see the ocean. Forest. Off there by Anicelli Killen. Martin's bouncer down to Rosaldo, and he scores it again. Rosado, I mean, great ball control, 
Body control, down low, nice little jump hook. 6'8", 247. Devin Collins, number 35 out of Chapmanville, has checked into the game for Marshall. Great shooter, and he will let it fly, and this one won't go. Taylor tries to keep it alive for the herd, but he steps out of bounds. Laura Taylor made a great pass there, falling out of bounds, getting the assist, but his foot landed on the end line. So it will be Forrest to send it in. Team with nine rebounds here early on. Oh, Marshall going to man-to-man -to -man now. Uh, weren't happy with uh, FAU. FAU very poised against that zone, especially not to have been expecting. Wow, what a move. And Elijah Martin for field goals. Uh, now a 9-0 run for FAU. So Marshall has to do something to slow down this FAU train. Elijah Martin at the line, 69% free throw shooter. Yeah, Marshall's also marked one for their last eight field goals. Need to get Kenzie the ball in the mid post play from there. Maybe get Byers a step in three. Got to get something to get this offense going. FAU's hit four free throws in the game. As a team, they hit 62%. Byers in trouble. And gets it out to Kinsey. The shot clock down to five. Devin Collins looking. Kinsey will have to force it up. Good defense by the Owls. Here they come on the attack. And Marshall's sticking with their man-to-man -man zone right now. There's been the thorn in their side. Rosado in the post. They're looking for him, too. Elijah Martin with it out front. Swings it over on the near side. Everett Winchester had checked into the game following the timeout. And as he drives in, he tumbles to the floor and a foul will be called. Yeah, Winchester with the quick baseline move. Uh, Collins for Marshall trying to come over to get the charge, but a little bit late. Second on Collins, team foul number four on the Thundering Herd. Everett Winchester. Started out at Wright State. That's the team that Marshall defeated in the season opener. Winchester at the free throw line, hitting 54.5%. This is his 12th game of action this season. Now let's see if uh, Coach Antoni may go back to that ball pick and roll at the top that they've been running for years. Uh, a little blood on Andy Taylor there. They'll put a little solution on it and get him ready to go. Winchester has started three games this season for Florida Atlantic. Andy Taylor, he has improved just so much, a terrific passer and just does a little bit of everything, Bob. Oh, he does. You know, Marshall needs somebody to step up and, and get upset when the other team scores. I know the coaches get upset, Sometimes you need a player on the court to hold the others accountable. Like, you know, Marshall got beat off the dribble there and the help had to come. And you know, they just need somebody to step up and play with that emotion and, and, and get everybody else. You know, I get mad when somebody scores on me. Well, they get a break there as Winchester missed both free throws. Nice drive by Taylor, but it just would not fall through for the young man out of Corbin, Kentucky. Elijah Martin cut off there. Gets it out to Brian Greenlee. Greenlee averages 10 points a game. Rosaldo back to Greenlee. Cutting into the lane. Crowd wanted a walk and a three pointer rifled up there by Davis, but it wouldn't fall. Here's Byers. Thought about it. Now he'll make a move to the hoop and off the mark. Davis on the move, knocks it off the glass and draws the foul. Yeah, sweet little Euro step by John L. Davis. Nice kiss off the glass. Uh, and I know Coach D'Antoni is planning on playing a zone with these three big guys in the game. Wasn't working, had to go man. And in, in the man defense, 
you know, Marshall at a quickness disadvantage. Uh, there's a few matchups on the court where the quickness level is just so obvious in the favor of Florida Atlantic. <coughs> so it's a three-point play there by Davis, and it's 22 to eight. You saw number 23 checking in for Marshall David Early out of Logan, West Virginia. Andy Taylor out here getting minutes, hasn't practiced this week for Marshall, just got cleared today to play. And, uh, and a chilly killing. The ball batted away and last touching Marshall. Yeah, and then on that play from a coaching standpoint, that's about as easy a shot as you can get. Albina with a great move, got the ball in the center of the lane, just grim is not being kind to the thundering herd. So the Owls go back to work here, leading it 22 to eight. And Forrest launching. Rebound by Byers. Kinsey. Well, right now, eight points for Marshall, the first 11 minutes of the game. You know, things are looking ugly. They need to take advantage of some of their heights, height matchups inside, because uh, off the dribble, Florida Atlantic's really playing good defense. Kinsey wants to attack, <coughs> dribble drive on the baseline, and he will draw the foul. And that's what Kinsey's really good at, you know, getting into the mid-range area, using his elevation to get an easy shot or draw a foul. Batumba Baruti picking up his second foul so he will check out and Majao Niang will check in he wears number one six nine junior appeared in all 13 games this season all coming off the bench nice pass into Anachilli Killen yeah good Alabama's play there Obina after the pick slipped to the other side and uh, would have had an easy one smart foul by the house so Greenlee picking up his first foul. Another look here, Bob. Yeah. Uh, Obina, after he picked for Kinsey, his man showed just a little bit, and Obina broke to the open area. Obina and Achille Killen on the board now as he hits the free throw. And Achille Killen, one of the top shot blockers in the country, hitting 75% of his free throws. Got the first, could not get the second one to drop. Marshall hitting nearly 70% from the line as a team this season. Davis. And the rebound there, but taken away from Niang by David Early. Andy Taylor lets a three fly. Kinsey with the rebound, but he stripped. Quick hands by Greenlee. Yeah, Marshall's 0 for their last 10 field goals, 1 for their last 14, as an easy That's shot there from Michael Forrest. Forrest now with 8 in the game, Bob. Yeah, Forrest is a scoring machine. And he just plays within the system so well. Uh, Ala Blanche Ely High School as Kenzie takes a 3 there for Marshall. And we talked earlier, Blanche Ely, it's a school well known for uh, professional athletes. Oh, yeah. Eight players in the NFL recently. And, Mark, when we won the national championship of Mountain State, I had two starters from Blanche Ely High School. Yeah, and they know Forrest, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I talked to them this morning, and uh, they know him well as That's Niang right. gets a push off in the back. Zach Moss was the national player of the year, and Adrian Jackson, and they said Forrest is a great kid. Said you couldn't get a better kid than him. Each team now with five team fouls. McKee checking back in for the Thundering Herd. Chase McKee, a freshman, his father Derek, spent 15 years in the NBA. Had a chance to talk to that young man this week and very personable. So it was neat to look back at old videos of his dad playing and in. Chili Killen hits the three-pointer, his 12th of the season. Boy, did Marshall ever need that. Oh, Marshall 0 for the first 10. 
Anichilli Killen steps behind the arc, knocks it down. And Marshall's now made a three in 985 consecutive games, but right back to answer is Forrest, his third. Yeah, Michael Forrest just knocking him down. Uh, big time three point shooter. Here's David Early, lets one fly and up for the rebound is Vlad Golden. Uh, I believe Coach D'Antoni wanted the ball in that mid post area and here Marshall, they've taken twice as many threes as FAU and made one less. Greenlee That's penetrates. Oh boy, Greenlee, mm -hmm. nice move. His first bucket of the game. Again, yeah. Greenlee coming in, urging 10 and a half a game. McKee on the drive and scores it. McKee now has four. Yeah, Greenlee on a beautiful drive. Now McKee, that's his second time this game, able to take his man off the dribble and get all the way to the basket. 6'9", very athletic. He's a soccer player for a long time and went to middle school, really started falling in love with basketball. Down low to Golden, taken away by the herd. Kenzie, the nice bouncer, and they knocked it out. He set to send it in for the thundering herd and right into the hands of FAU's Greenlee. Well, Marshall, only two of their last 14. They're shooting the ball as cold as it is outside here, Mark. Uh, only shooting 23% field goals. FIU is shooting 52% from the floor. Big difference. And Florida Atlantic has two threes. Marshall just one. Both of Florida Atlantic's coming from Forrest and then knocking it out from the outside is Greenleaf. Greenleaf, excellent elevation, just knocking the three down. Here is Kenzie, and his shot will be short, and right back come the Owls. Winchester to Greenlee, who just hit the three. 32-14 game, backing in, offensive foul on Rose Saldo, who checked in during the timeout. Yeah, David Early realizing it was a mismatch, about five inches in height, did a good job of getting position and drawing the charge. Now, when that's a primary defender, like early was, and he was outside the circle, but he can be inside the restricted area. It's the secondary help defender that has to get outside the restricted area. Obina and a chili killing. Launching and connecting. Yeah, Obina trying to put the herd on his shoulders. His second three of the game. The rest of the team is shooting goose egg from three-point land. Seven in the game for and a chili killing. So the FAU just very deliberate in their offense. Great ball movement, looking for the open man. Uh, you got an air ball in that position. Yeah, Martin shot a little too strong. Early to Kinsey. Yeah, great look by David Early. Tavion Kinsey running the floor for the slam dunk. And you get the three from Anna Chili Killen and then the Slam dunk there by Kinsey. Winchester trying to split the defenders, and a foul will be called. Yeah, Marshall looking for something to ignite him. David Early, Tavion Kinsey with a beautiful dunk. And that lob pass was from half court by Early. And when Early and Taylor are in the game together, Marshall has two primary ball handlers. And I think right now, the way they're struggling on offense, they need those two ball handlers in the game at the same time. Rosaldo, what a, what a nice little move by Rosaldo, who hails from West Palm, to Palm Lakes High School. Here is Anna Chili killing. He's killing it right now. Yeah. You know, he's been in the gym. He works. And you know, he wasn't a three-point shooter in high school. And look at him now. All three of Marshall's three, Obina shooting them from deep. 34-22. Saldo plays, plays a nice game off the bench. That one wouldn't go, and McKee gets the rebound, and he'll bring it across the 10-second line. Yeah, Rosado's been forced in double figures for FAU, but... Uh, you know, Bina has 10 of Marshall's 22 points, so somebody has to step up and give the young man some help. McKee at the line. He now has five in the game. McKee 
coming into this contest, two of seven at the free throw line. Again, he's just a player. He can do a little bit of everything, handles the ball well, passes it well, just has a real good feel for the game. And Kinsey trying to keep that one alive, and they're going to get him for a foul. Hmm. That was, I thought that was a little bit of a cheap call there. I think Kinsey just reached and hit the ball. Usually in college, they make you climb that back. They don't, they don't call the little touch fouls in there, but especially when the bonus, everybody has to walk to the other end of the court. Referees don't like to do that, Martin. <laughs> a long walk. All right, here's Winchester. And they're not allowed to wear their Fitbit. They don't get any credit for those steps. <laughs> Winchester, after missing his first two free throws, knocks that one down. Yeah, Winchester really put together. Athletic, does a lot of things well, goes off the bounce, rebounds, stick backs, gets up in the air on his mid-range jumper. Averaging a little over 23 minutes a game this season for Coach Dusty Mays, fourth. Edition of the Owls. 36-23, our score, and here comes Andy Taylor for Marshall. Yes. And that'll have Kinsey at the line for the thundering herd. 18 fouls now on Florida Atlantic. And there is Kinsey. Going to get another chance here. Davion Kinsey on the season. A 75% free throw shooter. down the second Marshall three of six at the free throw line here in this first half Forrest guarded tightly there by McKee and Forrest with the oh. scooper and draws the foul Boy, so crafty with the ball draws the contact little underhanded scoop off the glass tell you what Forrest can do it all he scores from all three levels Shoots the three at a very high percentage, able to get all the way to the basket, and has a tremendous mid-range game. Another look at it there, Bob. Oh, yeah, just draws the contact, little scoop. Uh, he's just always composed. He plays like a senior, and he's a sophomore. He I'm has, sorry, a junior, junior. He has 13 in the game. To a 15-point cushion here for the Owls. Yeah, Marshall, great ball movement, this possession. Uh, David Early dumping it off to Kinsey. Shot clock down to five. Here's Early. David, David Early knocking down the three. Marshall had to work that possession, Mark. Ten, I mean, the Owls made him work. Marshall fought through it. Early able to knock down the three. Now, Logan County responsible for all of the three-pointers, Bob. <laughs> yeah, two good ones there from Logan County. And then how about his fellow Logan County and, and the chili killing skying. And here's Early. He wants another three. He's got it. Yeah, David Early. If you look at that scoreboard, Marshall with a little momentum. You know, Obina might be the one on the defensive end just to get in everybody's face and tell them, let's stop people because he has that intensity. I guess you have to know what the score is, right? It yeah, helps. got to. It helps. <laughs> yeah, especially when you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here is Forrest. And this one would not go for the FAU standout. And who's there to get the rebound? But Early, who's buried those threes back to back. Nice pass to McKee and a nice move. Great drive by Early. McKee with a sweet reverse. Seven in the game for the newcomer for the Thundering Herd. And this crowd coming to life here as we close in on this first half inside the Cam Henderson Center. Marshall averaging 4,100 this season. This great venue. Here's Forrest on the move. 
Kicks it back out to Martin, who finds all kinds of traffic. McKee to Kinsey. Back to McKee, and lost yeah. his footing and loses the basketball. I think Coach Antonio would like to see Tavion Kinsey go to work in the open court. Offensive foul there. Tell you what, David Early is stepping up. And he's stepping up, hitting threes. He drew the foul there, giving Marshall an extra possession. Let's take a look here. Early getting good defensive position. Stopped FAU with a wide open three. Hey, David Early's making big plays, Mark. And John L. Davis committing the foul there. Team foul number nine on the Owls. Andy Taylor across the timeline, and we go under a minute here, and Kinsey's shot wouldn't go. Vlad Golden snags the rebound for the Owls. Yeah, isolation play for Kinsey where he can just elevate over the defender and get an easy shot, not able to hit it. Or is spinning. Goes to Martin. Skip pass, and Davis's shot wouldn't go, but nice tap back. Yeah. Winchester just... So, yeah, a superior athlete able to get in there and get things done. 6'6", 212 pounder, graduate student, and a whistle and a foul. And it's going to go against McKee, I believe. So two on McKee, and that puts the team foul count to 10 for Marshall. Yeah, currently Marshall's on an 8-0 run the last two minutes and 20 seconds. They've hit six of their last seven field goals, so... Um, and Florida Atlantic's on a almost a three-minute scoring drought before that free throw. 19 fouls on the herd as Winchester hits the first. So Niang is back in, and Golden will check out. See Dusty May. I say Dusty May's doing a great job there. Yes, he is. At a school that hasn't had a tremendous amount of success in basketball until he. Had, Yeah, Marshall will go for the last shot here, Mark. Um, they'll be down somewhere between eight and five. Andy Taylor with it out front for the Thundering Herd. Taylor negotiates and flips it up, and Niang gets it into the... Billy Killen and Chase McKee. The four and five players for Marshall had over half of their points. 17 of Marshall's 32. So head coach Dusty May trying to get the Owls a victory here in Huntington for the first time since February 1st, 2014, which was the first meeting in this series. And just like that, Elijah Martin guns in the three. See the ball movement and the confidence of those three guards. They, they just do so much with the ball. So back to a double-digit lead for the Owls, and here is Kinsey, and his shot falls short. Michael Forrest trying to maneuver around Anachilly Killen, and Anachilly Killen did a pretty good job of denying that shot, and it will be Marshall's basketball. Yeah, you know, Obina, that's an advantage for him. He can... Uh, defend smaller players with his quickness. He can defend larger players with his shot blocking ability. Uh, very versatile defensive player. Now I think he wants to play a little point guard right now. He's put on 15 <laughs> pounds for last season. All around hustle. What Dan D'Antoni says when talking about this young man just keeps getting better and better. And it's kind of funny, the harder you work, the better you get. He's yeah. a prime example of that. David Early whipping it to McKee, and McKee with the one-hander and gets the shooter's roll. You know, those two are playing with more confidence than anybody on the court. Chase McKee with his first start here and has nine in the game. FAU going to their motion offense. The ball will change sides of the court. That's a big key for them. Driving in was Martin, and Golden kept it alive. And now here's Martin, and mm. he's going to be fouled by Anachilly Killen, I believe. Well, they, they, they missed that one, Mark, if we take a look at it. Uh, Obina went straight up. Uh, the offensive player was bailed out there. And Obina's letting him know him was straight up. And 
And the referees have been hidden so far. You haven't seen them. Let's take a look at this. There was the rebound and the little kick out. Obina, hands straight up. Uh, that's called a bailout, Mark. And not hitting the free throw because the ball doesn't lie. <laughs> It may halfway lie. He may hit this one. but uh. Elijah Martin started out this second half by knocking down that three-pointer, and Golden tried to keep it alive, and, and just, it goes out of bounds. It's funny how that works out sometimes. You know, those you know, two missed free throws, I always call that an invisible turnover. The same result. David Early. Across the timeline for the Thundering Herd. Working with Chase McKee, Tavion Kinsey, Andy Taylor, and Obina and Achille Killen. David Early had two big threes there in the first half. Shot clock down to five. Here is Early open for a three, and that hits the back of the iron, and a nice rebound pulled out of there by Martin. Martin trying to wheel around McKee, and a whistle and a foul. Foul's number one, Chase McKee. That will be three on McKee here. Let's take a look at that. McKee you know, put that left arm out, fouled. Obina came for the clean shot block. McKee with the foul in the shooting motion of Martin. Dan D'Antoni will get... Michael Byers up off the bench. And McKee gets charged with that third foul. You know, Marshall has to get something out of Byers, Mark. I mean, he's too talented. He's 6'10", he jumps out of the gym, he shoots the ball from long distance, and you know, Coach D'Antoni played him 11 minutes the first half, you know, wasn't able to get a bucket. And Marshall has to figure out some way to use his shooting ability and get him shots, whether it's off of picks. Uh, he's just too talented. To, no, they're, they're, they actually had him early, got it to him late. Uh, and I, I think they want him to shoot. And then... yeah. He's fouled falling yeah. down, but he'll go to the line. I mean, seven-foot players can't guard him off the bounce. And... You know, people say that's a good shot for Byers. Byers can shoot the ball. I watched him in warm-ups. I mean, he was making them eight feet behind the three. He's just got to get that confidence going. If they put a seven-footer on him, Marshall ought to clear out for him every time, like Coach D'Antoni did that time. And he's doing everything in his power to get this young man going, and he is a key to Marshall's success without a doubt. They have to get him playing better. And, you know, to go scoreless the first half and your coach have confidence to run a spread clear out for you, you know, Byers has to step up and do it. And a lot of times, shooters see that ball go through the net, and they their confidence uh, lights up. Byers came into the game. He had just attempted six free throws, had made four, and here he knocks down three in a row. Okay, just as good as a three-pointer, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Every bit. Here's that 2-1-2 two, two press that Marshall's been working on. Hard to press these veteran guards for FAU. Not, not a – extended gambling press. More of a slow you down and get you deep in the shot clock. Forrest has the ball knocked away from behind by Taylor. Now see if Marshall, they'll go probably to their man-to-man -man on OB unders. Greenlee will be the no, trigger. I think it's in the zone. Greenlee into Forrest and a quick release oh. by Forrest. I mean, great defense by Obina Forrest. Just a big time player. Three three pointers now. He has hit sweet 16 here. There's Byers with a height mismatch inside. And, and he should have just stayed in there and he worked to get him to basketball. David Early to Taylor. Byers steps back, launches. Kinsey trying to keep it alive, but into the hands of Martin. Here comes FAU. Greenlee, the dish, and a walk going to be called by Baruti. And Mark, 
the one place, well, the Marshalls miss Jared West has been his defensive leadership. But second, Jared West knew when to slow the team down, when to speed them up. And, you know, they've missed him in those two areas tremendously so far this year. Rusaldo, who had a good first half off the bench, he's in for Golden. Here is Kinsey on the drive and gets the bucket, his third field goal of the game. Yeah, Kinsey using his athletic ability. Nobody can jump with him. Put that head down, go get you a five-footer and put it in the basket. Greenlee from way out, and boy, what a yeah. big rebound there by Rosaldo. And that's what Coach D'Antoni was talking about in the paper, about getting out played, not playing hard enough. You know, there's no excuse for that right there. Rosaldo now in double figures with 10. Here is Anna Chili killing with another three-pointer, his fourth of the game. You know, being is developing before your eyes. I mean, <laughs> He's, he's got 13 in the game. He came into the game, Bob, with 11 three-pointers. He might match it here. Oh, he's shooting game. the lights out. <laughs> and uh, and Marshall going to that zone again, trying to get a look at it, see if they can stop that three-point shooting. Yeah. Greenlee whips a pass there in the paint. Now they get it back out, and Forrest at the buzzer. Mm -hmm. He had a good look there, but Byers with the rebound. Here comes Marshall trying to whittle away here, down eight. And a chilly kill and loses the handle into the hands of Greenlee. The scoop to Forrest. We're looking for Forrest, just knowing when to slow his team down. Ooh. <laughs> Boy, I didn't see that coming. Martin. Martin. Martin wanted to take slowly. it with authority. Byers hit with the foul. So we head to the break. And a chilly killing, killing it for the three point line for the herd. Well, as we headed to the break, Marshall hit with a foul. Dan D'Antoni not let's happy. A, let's take a look. Wow, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what Byers is supposed to do there, Mark. I mean, he jumped up straight up, held his hands up. Uh, he's not supposed to get out of the way and let him dunk the ball. Uh, I thought that was one of those anticipated calls. And uh, uh, the crowd here is unhappy at Henderson. I can see why. Uh, I mean, you got to give Martin credit. He went in there to dunk the ball, but if the – if the defender is entitled to the verticality, he can go straight up with his hands up. If there's a collision in the air, that doesn't mean it's a foul. And uh, I thought that was a bad call against Byers. Martin has scored seven here in the second half. So he has 11 for the game. One of three double figure scorers coming in to this contest for FAU. Now, they lead it by 10. Now Marshall needs to spread the floor and go to the hole. They'll get the foul. I mean, referees, they even things out. There's Kenzie. Uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Uh, I mean, that's just old coaching. How many years did you coach? A bunch. But, <laughs> and that was even late. But, you know, they're sitting there thinking, hey, a close one went the other way. Uh, right here, and he did get hit on the arm, but real late call by the officials. And, you know, when you're running your sets like Coach D'Antoni is, when one close goes against you on one end, you come back and go the hole, you're going to get it back. Davion Kinsey at the free throw line has seven in the game. Made just one of three from the stripe here thus far mm -hmm. in this contest. Yes, yeah, Mark, like when they call a move and pick on one end, when you go the other end, don't run anything with a ball pick because <laughs> if you move, they're going to call it. So good, good move there by Coach D'Antoni. All right, Kinsey gets the lead back to single digits as he hits the second free throw. Kinsey has eight in the game. Marshall staying with that extended zone, and FAU has done a good job of ball movement and attacking it. They, they attack it with a lot of patience. Beat it down low, trying to get it into the hands of the big man, Rosaldo, and good defense by Marshall. Here is Byers from downtown, and he's he got fouled. fouled again. And that's, I know um, Rosado is looking at that like how he fouled him after the shot. You know, and Byers shot that. that. That's how much respect Byers has. He shot that from 21, 26 feet, 27, and definitely collision on the lower body. The shooter has to have a spot to land. 
And they didn't let Byers land on that one. Well, they have the map of the state of West Virginia there in the court. Was he right there in that star area? Was he right there around Huntington? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he shot that from Twin Towers dorm over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly where he shot it from. <laughs> uh, All right, so well, Byers has been to the free throw line twice here. Yeah, and then after three point yeah, attempts. He goes six for six. That's the same thing as making two threes. So Byers' confidence should be shooting up. They have to have him. I mean, give him the ball, let him play, because Marshall's going nowhere without Byers. Six oh. for six at the line. Mar it's a six point game. Uh, Marshall switched up their press there, went to a one, two, one, one. Which, which requires Marshall to trap much earlier than the half court. So trying to get aggressive here, lead down to six. Now they're going back to their zone. They feel that they've had success the last few possessions and uh, going back to it. Andy Taylor with the bump there. It's his first foul of the game. Marshall with four here in the second half, three for the outs. FAU will try to get forced and Bob, they got him. What a set. Forrest. What a set. Right down the bottom oh, of the hatch. Did you see the weave and then the fade pick for Forrest? Beautiful set by FAU. Wow, I love that. 19, boy, down to six, and Forrest gets it back to nine. Here's Kinsey. He'll pull up. Rims out of there for the Thundering Herd standout. Yeah, it's just funny. When things aren't going right, you go to your superstar. And Forrest has been able to deliver. Said it before the set. They're going to Forrest on this play. No look there. Davis from the outside. He couldn't connect. Yeah, you can tell Davis has a great shot. Beautiful follow through. David Early fires up a three. Wouldn't go. And a chilly killing. Yeah. Keeps it alive. Needs, Byers needs to step into shooting range. He's got a chance to get a three right here. Andy Taylor to Kinsey. Kinsey is bumped as he was working through some traffic. And foul is going to be against Davis. Now on this OB, Marshall will look for a mid-range for Kinsey. The second option has to be a three for Byers. Got to get the young man going. So Marshall is gone There's without Byers. a field goal here. Byers, Byers trying to feed Anna Chili Killen, and the Owls mm. take it away. Davis. The bouncer, Niang, the foul called. Yeah, Byers on this end needs to look for that three, and if he if he doesn't have it wide open, he needs to give the ball to the playmakers and let them go and uh, it cost them a turnover on that other end. Yeah, second foul called on Taylor here, just last minute of play. So Niang at the line at 14 in the season opener against New Mexico. <laughs> and he connects. <laughs> Niang has some really odd form there, Mark. He's, he's aiming at section 105 over there. <laughs> Watch his belly buttons facing 105. And he shot that one right in the basket. Watch this odd. Look at this. Watch this odd setup. Turn, look at the body. Facing the section over there, 105. A little shoulder wiggle. Boy, and got great it. touch on it. Great touch on it. So Niang on the season. <laughs> now five to six at the line. Hey, so it, if it works, you stick with it. 57-46, Kinsey motoring to the hoop. Yeah, let's see. I like Marshall's offense like that. The ball pick wasn't sideways for Kinsey. Mark. The picker for Marshall had his belly button facing the other rim. And then if Kinsey can get there, there's no way to switch that. And Kenzie, Ken, they need to get Kenzie in the open floor. Coach D'Antoni's trying everything to get his team going. Everett Winchester with his second. Both teams with five fouls. And Kenzie again attacking the hoop. And this foul will be on Martin, who checked in a moment ago as they gave Greenlee a blow. And that's two on Martin now. And Coach D'Antoni's a little upset that the, the whistle blew late. Now he's... Deion right. Kinsey with eight in the game. Let's see if uh, Marshall gets both of these. If they get the second one, I, I look for him to get into that one-two-two two, where they're going to trap earlier and try to turn the game out. This is FAU's a hard team to trap with those great guard play. Here it is. Okay, now they're in their two-one-two. Two. No, there goes Kinsey. He was in the wrong thing. 
Now he's up on the ball. There comes the quick trap. FAU, great guard play, attack it. Marshall will try for the tip back there. Well, Mark work. just wow. went through all kinds of defenders to get that bucket. And here is Kinsey right back on well, the that, offensive end for the herd. Yeah, that's his game. Boy, FAU, very seasons against the press. Uh, wow, did they attack that press yeah. beautifully? Yeah, Martin now with 13 in the game. Kinsey has 12 and down low to Niang. Ball bouncing around. And Niang keeps it alive, and he'll put up another shot and gets it to go, his first field goal. Boy, Niang getting it done here in the second half. He had to fight for that bucket. Yeah, great hustle. Yes, it was. Yeah. Here comes the ball pick for Kenzie. See, Kenzie's figured it out now. They can't stop him. Yeah, right there is Marshall's offense. Turn, Ken. I mean, he's turned loose. Kenzie needs to take it to the basket. If they collapse, put your shooters out there. And, you know, Marshall looks a lot better offensively, but they cannot get stops against this FAU machine. Winchester, just a little one-hander straight in front of the hoop. Winchester with his first bucket of the second half. Yeah, that's the weak part of that zone. A wide zone like that, the weak part is the center of the free throw line. Winchester has five in the game, and the Owls come up with it on the defensive end and Winchester wow. again. Well, Everett Winchester, the beautiful move, a little reverse layup. Oh, he's playing well. A yeah, young man out of Baltimore, transferred from Wright State, came in averaging seven and a half a game. He's got seven. Taylor strokes it. Yeah, yeah Marshall's getting their rhythm back offensively. You know, last possession, Kinsey had a turnover. And he needs to drive till they stop him. Take it to the basket until they stop him. Andy Taylor now with 25 three-pointers on the season. Marshall's seventh here of the game. Winchester again and developing by the week. He gets better every week. Really shooting the three, leads the country in block shots. Uh, he's four for six tonight behind the arc. He's doing it all, Mark. Davion Kinsey. Michael Byers and Byers will be fouled by Niang. And just, that yeah. will be the second on Niang. Yeah, yeah, and then the 16th foul. You know, everything, Marshall's just one behind. Now, if that's the 17th foul, uh, oh, it is. Okay, I looked up there, saw that. Well, what do we got here, Mark? Eight. See, oh, the 18th foul. And I tell you, Byers has been stepping up to that line, knocking him down. Uh, you know, he, he's played a much better second half. Nine point game, another coming for Byers. Yeah, well, FAU dominating the bench points 24 to six, Mark. I mean, that's a huge gap, but Marshall has guys out, you know, sitting over there in street clothes and they really don't have a deep bench tonight. Michael Byers with eight points all in the second half, all from the free throw line. He's a perfect eight for eight and a foul called FAU attacks on the offensive end. Yeah, they got early on the reach before the charge. Uh, Andrew Taylor was there to take the charge, but they called the foul early on on the reach. Coach D'Antoni's upset. Oh, now that's on the ground. That's what Coach D'Antoni's saying. There's no way they're shooting the basketball there. As they conference, sometimes when three of them get together, it's worse than one. David okay, early. I quit, Mark. <laughs> David oh, early. yeah. I mean, they, they called the foul on early right there. Well, I'll tell you, a little closer than I thought on replay. Man. That's his second of the game. So team foul number six on the herd. And Greenlee to the line on the night, five points. First trip to the stripe and knocks it down. Greenlee shooting below 50% at the yeah, line. Let's look at that, right? If you're going into shooting motion, you get rewarded with two, and that, well, that was a close. That was close. Greenlee now with seven in the game, 10 point advantage for the Owls of Florida oh, look Atlantic. At look at this, the Owls showing a little zone for the first time. A little one, two, two, extend the zone. Kenzie needs the ball at the foul line. There it is. That's the open spot against that zone. Kenzie not able to deliver. And turn around, no good, and Baruti comes away with the missed shot. 
Here's Davis flipping wow. up the shot. What a play oh. by Davis, and he's down. Ooh. Oh, a nice reverse layup by Davis there. Uh, he hit the ground so hard his shoe came untied. Lace up the shoe. and Yeah, he'll have to come out now. I, uh, he wants to stay in, but the trainer trainer came out on the floor, and they're telling him he's got to go. Oh, what a nice play there by Davis. He has five in the game. Young man out of Gary, Indiana. Yeah, beautiful reverse layup. And, uh, so he will leave, and that will bring Winchester back in. All right, he gets this zone, Mark. The open area is Kenzie at the center of the foul line and then your two shoulders down in the corner. And uh, they're attacking the 3-2 zone. I mean, the center of the foul line is open. It looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. They're, Marshall's going to overload the left side of the floor and try to get Kenzie the ball at the foul line. They'll have Obina on the left wing and slide Byers down to the corner, and the zone will be overloaded. Let's see if that's what Marshall tries to do. Got Obina in the center of the foul line making the decision. There he is. Now make the right decision. And he got fouled. So that's how you attack yeah. that 3-2. Yeah, and a chilly mm -hmm. kill and just uh, maneuvering in there and yeah. draws contact. Yeah, Marshall attacked it with Obina in the center and then Kenzie and Byers both behind the three. I think a lot of people like to attack that with somebody at the center of the foul line and a low post player and a shooter on the same side of the floor to overload that zone where they can't match up. Uh -huh. FAU was able to match up and just take, you know, Bina had to play one-on-one, -on -one, which he's pretty good at. Well, one of the country's top shot blockers, second, and and a chilly killing. He's turned into a good free throw shooter, a good three-point shooter, super athletic, uh, and he's developing into one of the top players in the conference. 69-58. And back to a 10-point game. FAU got Batumba Baruti out of there after he picked up his third foul. And they brought Niang back in. Yeah, with Forrest out of the game now, I thought the Marshall may go to their more uh, traps in the backcourt. And back in the game for the Owls is Davis. Crowd wanted to walk and wow. flipping it up and getting it to go is Martin. What a play by Martin. Oh, you see that pass to Byers. Byers jumped over everybody in the gym for the slam dunk. Well, that's one of those dun 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 <laughs> Well, you had the acrobatic play by Martin and then the flush by Byers. Still a 10-point game and what did he call? Three seconds? Three seconds, yeah. Lane violation. Give it <laughs> you don't see that very much. Somebody must have been camping in there with a tent. <laughs> I mean, they don't call it. How about this, Bob? Oh, just falling Ooh. down. <laughs> I don't know if you practice that one. That's just... That was a beauty. All right, let's see what they're in now. Uh, the Owls going back to that zone. Who are they going to go with? Obina in the center of the foul line? Yep. And Vlad Golden checking back in. Niang is out for FAU, and here is Kinsey flipping it in. And Marshall doing a great job of attacking this 1-2-2 two, two zone. Uh, don't look for the Owls to stay in that long, and Marshall just killing it. And here comes a timeout. In. Squaring off here, eight-point game. Marshall back to a man-to-man -man defense right now. Uh, Florida Atlantic's put force back in the game to calm him down. Great trap there in the corner and a turnover. And Marshall has the basketball. And a chance here to claw into this Florida Atlantic lead. There's the D. Early and Byers. Avion Kinsey with 16. Out to Byers. Byers with a big step and couldn't get it to go. And a foul will be called on his way to the hoop. Yeah, Byers doing a good job of getting to the basket, uh, drawing fouls. He's eight for eight at the line. All eight have been this half? Yeah, all, yeah, so. yeah, all yeah. ten of his points, yep. Yeah. And 
but that was a big step, wasn't it? <laughs> and it was. And that when you're six uh, ten, you can <laughs> yeah, you got big steps like that in you. Buyers up and can't get this one to drop. Yeah, eight for nine. Buyers still shooting eighty eight percent tonight. That was a big one there. And this is a crunch time right here. It's either. And that's an eight-point game right now, and somebody will make a move in the next few minutes. Saldo is back in, and Byers gets the second yeah. one to go. So FAU with Martin, Forrest, Greenlee, Winchester, and Rosaldo, Early, Byers, Kinsey, and Achille Killen, and Taylor on the court for the herd. Forest, and we got a whistle away from the ball, and I believe they've got early with the foul. Hmm. So that'll put Rosaldo at the line. Let's see what the call was here. Just little hand out in on the roll guy going to the basket. Rosaldo eyes it and knocks it down. Boy, Rosaldo's played a good game. I mean, making his free throws, great moves the first half. Uh, can't say enough about that young man. Big time game for him tonight. Yeah. Not a starter, but he's played in all 14 games. Could not get that one to drop yeah. coming into the contest. 58% free throw shooter. There's the pick for Kenzie at the top. Kenzie just needs to attack make the right play and see what happens. That's good offense if he can attack off the bounce. <clears throat> David pass. Early give and go with Anna Chili Killen and Early and the big man from Chapmanville Regional High with the bucket and draws the foul. Yeah, great pass by Early. Obina with the finish drawing the contact. Wow, he's just getting better. And a chili killing with 17 in the game and a free throw coming here at the Cam Henderson Center in a 72-66 game. Free throw coming for this guy, Obina and a chili killing. Boy, he's put a show on. Look at draws the contact. Pass from David Early. Logan passing to Chapmanville. You don't expect that. <laughs> then Obina shooting the deep three. I mean, Mark, he's just been doing it all for the herd. What a game he's had. Now, well, once Early slipped out of the gold and blue of Logan and Obina out of the black and orange of Chapmanville Regional, and they slipped on that uh, green and white, uh, they've loved it. Yes, they have. And they're both of them really playing well for the herd. 72-67. And a big possession here. Marshall back in their man-to-man. -man. They put Kinsey on Forrest. Greenlee with it, guarded by Early. Zipping through wow. traffic and scoring is Martin. He's been impressive here tonight. Oh, well, I mean, this is a hard finish by Martin. Great job. Driving to the basket, protecting the ball, and able to finish. Uh, that's that. Uh, Puta Gorda, Florida? No, Martin, Martin Allen, Mississippi, I'm sorry. Career high 22 earlier this season against Troy. Here's Byers, Kinsey open. Just could not get it to drop. And here come the Owls. Yeah, FAU very patient on offense. Yeah, they would love to get Forrest to look. Uh, he's got the mismatch right now. Forrest in the corner. There he is out top. Boy, they, they, they didn't recognize it. Here's Winchester. Yeah. Uh, Forrest was being guarded by Byers there. I really expected FAU to clear the floor uh, for Forrest and let him go to work. And now the coach is calling him over there right now, telling him you've got to go get the ball. When you see that mismatch. Well, that's four on David Early, Bob, and that puts Winchester to the line. McKee will hop up off the bench for the Thundering Herd. The head coach, Dan D'Antoni. 
Two great coaches in this game and battling it out here. Dusty May for Florida Atlantic. Here comes that straight ball pick. That's the ball pick I like for him. Both two of them get him going downhill and they turned it over. Quick hands by Greenlee. Forrest with it for the Owls. Oh, Greenlee. Beautiful play. Yeah, Niang wow. finishing. Yeah, Marshall switched the pick, but Niang didn't set it. He uh, slipped it. Beautiful play by the Owls. Niang has six in the game, all coming here in the second half. And Michael Forrest gets an open look, uh, just really running good things. Well, you know, we love we love just talking about coaches' backgrounds. And, you know, May, he fell in love there with the game at a young age. He went to Indiana. He was a manager and, you know, just uh, kept climbing the ladder. He's had a lot of stops along the way. Went to USC, Eastern Michigan, Murray State, and La Tech in Florida. And then he gets stuck in Boca Raton. Isn't and that terrible? <laughs> they call it paradise. Oh. Niang's got to let it go, uh, and he hits it. Now, when that goes That's in at the end of the shot clock, uh, you know it's your night. Knee hang with the big bucket. And Marshall had gotten it down to five, and FAU responding with six straight points. Back up by 11. Taylor tied up by Davis. And a foul call. And, of course, we talk about Dan D'Antoni's background, 30 years there in Myrtle Beach. That's not a bad place to hang out for about 30 years of your life. Huh? No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, every look at the time call I, here. Yeah, yeah, I got to reach in there. Close. Uh, every time I would go to Myrtle Beach, I would give Dan a call. We'd go to his restaurant. He had a nice restaurant down there. And guess what kind of food? You know, it was Italian. <laughs> <laughs> 30 years in Myrtle Beach as a high school coach. He's in the South Carolina High School Coaches Hall of Fame. And, of course, in Marshall's Hall of Fame. And then, Spent 10 years with brother Mike in the NBA and now in his eighth season here at Marshall University. 10-point game. Oh, I can't even add that up, Mark. And I was an algebra teacher. That's hard to add up all those years. Oh. Boy, what a play there. Martin on the ground and found Davis. And Davis scores it. He has seven. And then Anna oh. Chili killing Davis on the defensive oh, end. I mean, it's just like a junkyard dog, Mark. They, you know, everything goes wrong, and their toughness just gets them a bucket. I mean, that's happened, what, four or five times tonight. And we, you can't coach that type of toughness. You can make sure it gets on the floor, though. Good man out of Gary, Indiana. TV on Kinsey. Anna Chili Killen lets the three fly and knocks it down. Oh, he just, every time Marshall needs a play, Obina's there, big time three. Cuts it to nine, and uh, you know, Marshall just needs to get one of those tough buckets that the Owls are getting, Again, or, a, came or a tough in, stop. Yeah, he came in with 11 threes yeah. on the season, has five here tonight. Here's Greenlee wanting a three. Taylor got it into the hands of McKee. Taylor on the move. Back to the young McKee who got a start here tonight, and he lost the handle. You know, just a hard turnover there. You got, you know, the freshman doing a little bit too much there. So when you get that ball, big possession like that in one of the upperclassmen's hand. Early with four fouls is going to check back into the game. And then FAU forced in control of the ball here. Drew the double team, made the right play out of it. Gets it to Greenlee, to Martin, and Martin winning. To look down, see zone. Don't tell me that FAU's going to go man now. No, they're staying in the zone. Dusty Mays staff, including Kyle Church, Todd Abernathy, Drew Williamson, of course for Marshall and Dan D'Antoni, Mark Klein, Scott Rijo, and Corny Jackson. Long pass over to Byers, great save. Here's Early back in the game, little give and go. Well, what, a, what a drawn up play coming out of the timeout, getting Obina a dunk, great pass by Early. Now Marshall going to their full court trap. They'll trap everywhere. 23 in the game for Obina. And a chilly killing. 
FAU is going to use the shot clock here. Hard to score at the end of a shot clock, Mark. Yeah, that's just heartbreaking for coaches when that happens. Give up a second shot. Uh, boy, Coach May wanted them to use that shot clock at the end, and they didn't. Give him Marshall a shot here. And Chili Killen had 22 earlier in the season in a loss to Northern Iowa. 23 here. Kenzie was 16 and trying to get it to 18 and just would not go through. Yeah, clock down to 217. Again, FAU will, will use the clock here. When I say it's hard to score at the end of the clock, well, when you hold it until there's 10 seconds left, the defense only has to guard you for 10 seconds. So, you know, it's, it's hard on the offense to get a bucket, but they're doing a good job of using the shot clock. Down to eight. Michael Forrest with it. Forrest will let it fly, and once again, uh, they keep it alive. Yeah. And Coach Mays over there uh, screaming. Pull that ball out. Greenlee penetrates, kicks, and here's Forrest. And that is a big one for Forrest. His third three of the second half, five for the game. 22 for Forrest, early trying to answer. Yeah, Forrest has been the difference here. I mean, he's made clutch shots all night. Ala Blanche, Ely High School, uh, big time player. Open again, can't leave him open. Oh, <laughs> and boy, two in a row. Uh, two time Florida 6A player of the year, or two time 6A state champion there at Blanche Ely. He's the MVP of tonight, Mark. A lot of classes in the state of Florida. So now it's a 13 point game. We're under a minute. Here is Kinsey up and in. Charlotte yeah. wiped out. Marshall had. Conference USA road game with Southern Miss shelled due to COVID issues and Hurt had lost to La Tech. So FAU again coming in, playing its first league game of the season. And the foul is going to be called against Early. And that will do it for David Early, who played a nice game here tonight. Yes, he did. Early played really well, uh, had some good assists. End up with eight assists. So he really passed the ball well. And then FAU with experienced guard play. You know, they have four ball handlers on the floor, so they're able to spread the floor, run the clock down, and it looks like they're going to get out of here with a great road win. Early had two big threes in the first half. He finishes with six points. Davis at the line for Florida Atlantic. And Davis now with eight in the contest. It's an 87-75, and now 88-75. Well, I tell you, FAU made big plays when they needed to. Uh, played a tremendous game. Kinsey flying in and gets it to go. Kinsey now with 20 in the game. And then you know, Kinsey exploding to the basket, but then FAU gets the ball That's into to their star's hand for us, and he just makes the right play. Kyle Braun, who checked in for David Early when he fouled out. Braun, the freshman, Los Angeles native, he scored 19 points this season. Coach Dusty May will get his 55th career win there at FAU. Forrest now with 26 in the game. A solid 26-2, only on 16 shots. 77% free throw shooter, buries both. 92-77, Andy Taylor. Wheels around, ball out of bounds, and it's gonna go off Marshall. Yeah, that should do it. Uh, you know, Coach D'Antoni wants, wants to pressure defense here not to give up. Uh, they won't foul on purpose, but they will try to get a trap. Greenlee to Martin, who is guarded by Kinsey. And now here is Forrest. He's going to dribble it out. 